exactly one year ago, I woke up uh, from a 15-year-long open access coma. <laughs> For 15 years, I refused to read, hear about, or be aware in any shape or form anything to do with open access, scholarly communications, anything like that. That doesn't make me different from a number of colleagues that both you and I can mention. What perhaps makes me slightly different is the fact that between 2000 and 2003, I worked obsessively uh, on a project that some of you with gray hair and long memories may remember. It was called ELS, this uh, Electronic Society of Social Scientists, and uh, at the modest aim of replacing Elsevier as a publisher of uh, economics journals. When the project didn't uh, achieve the success I was hoping for, uh, I vowed never, ever to get involved with scholarly communication again. So before I tell you why I've broken my vow, uh, perhaps I can tell you my experience, because it was, I, I believe, quite unique, right? Uh, I had these two snapshots, 2003, 2018. And uh, what has happened to open access? Well, there are some good news, uh, such as Plan S, the REF, in a sense, uh, institutional repository in 2003 were not very well developed. Now they are well developed and populated. And uh, that's about it. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I was involved with the Budapest Initiative uh, back in 2001. And uh, to be locked in the same room with Stephen Harnad for eight hours, this has been recorded, right? <laughs> it's um, exhausting. Um, so, uh, well, let me tell you that I don't see a huge amount of progress. Uh, I see the old mistakes being repeated again. Uh, the old evil seer is still there, ruining our lives. Um, so, why did I get involved with this? Well, I was uh, essentially forced into it by my co-author, who's got a uh, maths and uh, medical uh, background. Uh, and something that we tend to forget is that open access is not just kind of a, an academic issue. I mean, uh, he was working in Africa, and the lack of open access reduces and diminishes the lives of millions of people. We tend to forget that. Uh, you know, that we talk about diversity. I mean, imagine the stunting of talent in places like Africa that a lack of open access produces, okay? That's diversity in action, wouldn't you say? Um, right, so I was forced to, uh, to come back because my conscience was, was troubling me. Uh, and, and we think we have a potential solu solution that is, that is cheap, doable, and uh, with a fair chance of success. So I will now skip to the last slide. When uh, views are counted properly, uh, thanks to the project that I'm going to talk about briefly and counter, then views will count. And when views count, authors want to be viewed. And if authors want to be viewed, then they have to make their own research output visible. And what is the best way of making your research visible? Is to deposit in an open access repository. That is the one slide that I would like you to take home. Right. Okay, now the rest is details. Suppose that the Wellcome Foundation uh, wants to uh, assess the impact of something about uh, emergency medicine. As far as I understand, the only way of doing that would be by some form of citation-based metric. 
which of course is completely useless. Okay, so, um, oh sorry, uh, this is uh, maybe the, the next important uh, uh, slide here. I work on this as assumption that it is, it is feasible to aggregate online usage data for peer-reviewed papers in a consistent, validated, and audible, uh, auditable fashion. Okay. And my claim that I hope to convince you uh, about is that uh, that will provide an indirect but powerful way to open access. The second claim, which I will not expand about, but I think it's, uh, we should not forget about it, is that by doing that, we can reduce the knowledge gap between rich countries and poor countries. So this is uh, some, sometimes forgotten. Right, okay, why is any kind of citation uh, uh, metric useless? Let me give you some evidence here. Uh, in the last five years, 27 African countries covering 200 million people have produced zero research articles. Therefore, they cannot cite anything because they haven't produced anything. Okay, so you might say, so what? Uh, clinicians in those countries will have access to uh, uh, papers, but in some fashion, okay? And those views are not recorded. Who cares, right? Well, that's uh, the wrong way to look at it uh, because it skews research production. Why would I write a paper that is relevant for, for example, these 27 countries if I know that I'm not going to be cited? Okay, so uh, the very fact that uh, alternatives to uh, citations are not available skews research uh, in a way that is not beneficial to humanity. Okay, so I have no incentives to do research any topic that may be relevant to countries that don't produce citations. Okay, so. Lack of incentives, that is the major theme of my talk and the problem why we are still here talking about open access uh, nearly 20 years since the beginning of the story. Okay, so again, incentives. Who would gain and who would lose if you move things uh, in terms of academic rewards away from citations and towards non-citation impact? Well, again, let's look at emergency medicine journals uh, in Africa, and let's see what happens uh, if you if you replace ranking by citation, uh, ranking by views. Okay, the top two journals, Resuscitation and Annals of Medi uh, Emergency Medicine, both published by you know who, uh, will um, move from first and second to sixth and eleventh. Uh, on the other hand, the International Journal of uh, Emergency Medicine, which is currently languishing in 20th place, according to citations, moves up to fourth. Right? Okay, so, uh, there you are. Don't expect very profitable publishers to move in any way towards anything other than citation. Okay, now I could spend a lot of time here and you can fill in the details what's wrong with uh, counting views downloads, okay? I may even resist the temptation to tell you that the third most downloaded paper in the public library of science is fellatio by fruit bats prolongs copulation time, okay? We all have read that and uh, <laughs> learned from it. Okay, so, the. I could have a, a very long list and it's totally irrelevant. The question is not whether we should collect viewing data, okay, but rather who should do it and for whose benefit, okay? That ship has sailed, okay? Viewing data are being collected but not by you. Okay, let's play spot the difference. There you go. 
this is what I referred earlier on in one of my questions, the standard Elsevier journal subscription contract, section 2.4. There you are, okay? The subscription you are paid for, uh, for your viewers, uh, Elsevier is gracious enough to give the data to you for internal use only, right? Therefore, they're useless. Okay. Uh, is that inevitable? And uh, nope. Look at the very same clause for the University of California. Elsevier, go and yourself. We can do with our data what we like. Right? By the way, it wouldn't be interesting and ironical if uh, the University of Lancaster had the, this contract. In fact, maybe you want to check whether you fall in this category or this category. So, I bet, again, to eat again by bag, if there aren't some uh, vice chancellors or, dare I say, head librarians who talk about open data, etc., and still have this. Okay? Right. Okay. So, of, of course, for uh, uh, viewing data to be uh, valuable, they have to be collected on a worldwide system. So what's the problem? We've got lots of uh, repositories. Uh, um, we've got PubMed, ResearchGate, uh, publishers, uh, platforms. Just collect all the data and uh, that's not a problem. Uh, so obviously this was what Pyrus was about, some of you may be familiar with it, um, and the idea was why don't we collect all the data from uh, everybody, and the P stands for publishers, and uh, had you asked me at the time in 2009, uh, I would have made the easiest prediction that anyone can make. The P will disappear, and it did. Okay, um, so, Problems with it, large volume of data, need of a central clearinghouse, allocation of costs. Why did Pyrus fail? Don't read the paper. The true reason is that publisher didn't want to buy into the project. Why? Because as soon as you give weight to views, you shift the value from articles that are owned by publishers to post prints that are not owned by publishers. So expecting turkeys to vote for Christmas is always the wrong idea. And uh, publishers, I'm sorry to tell you, they are always several steps ahead of you. Follow the money. What is Evil Seer doing? They have bought pure plum analytics uh, Aries, they have uh, bought uh, um, uh, SSRN, and so on and so forth. Okay. Right, so there is a different way of doing it. Okay, that is um, very simple. The problem with uh, Iris slash Pyrus was the idea of a central clearinghouse who maintains that, who pays for it, and so on and so forth. Well, there is an alternative way that is cheap, absolutely uh, reliable, uh, and is uh, blockchain, okay? Now, as soon as I say blockchain, uh, some of you will think about Bit Bitcoin, uh, oh, isn't that terrible, cryptocurrencies, uh, billions of pounds disappearing overnight, blah, blah, blah. Bitcoin is not just a uh, blockchain, it's got all other technologies into it, and it, money is involved, okay? So, but the key idea of uh, the blockchain part of Bitcoin is very simple. Uh, it's to do with validated transaction. So, I want, Amanda wants to send one Bitcoin to Bob, okay? Um, then it sends the message to a node, can be anybody, I'll tell about more about that. Uh, then there is a validation system, does Amanda have one Bitcoin to send? 
uh, and if, if everything, if the rules of the, of the game uh, have been uh, complied with, then this transaction is recorded on the ledger that can never, ever be manipulated, okay? No one has ever managed and will ever be able to break the ledger, okay? That's the whole point of blockchain. Right, so, why? You can see where this is going. I'm going to replace coin with views, okay? Hence, bit views, right? When you view my article, you are transferring one view to my account, okay? And all of this is done without human intervention, okay? So cost zero. All right, so suppose I want to see this, uh, I'm seeing this article from an Elsevier journal. Uh, what will happen? Counter comes in, counter is uh, a system for essentially cleaning up viewing data, okay? Is it perfect? No. That's another problem that you guys have. You want perfection. No. Good enough is good enough. Move on. Okay? <laughs> perfection is always uh, uh, attainable next year. Start with something that works. That's what will... Uh, hmm? It's been cut by someone. Okay, that's what will be recorded. The DOI of what I've looked at, uh, where I am, and when I've done it. Okay. So, uh, then someone else uh, looks at the same thing. That's what the ledger would show. Uh, who looked at what, when, and from where. Okay, so, instead of this, that tells me who has cited this particular article, I will be able to see this. Who uh, has viewed the article where, and you can also have a little widget that tells you the evolution of the time, blah, blah, blah. All open data, zero cost. You can have this uh, and do whatever you like with it. Okay. Um, one of the problems with uh, uh, Bitcoin is uh, that uh, anybody can check the validity of a transaction. Uh, that creates a huge amount of problems uh, that BitViews doesn't have. Uh, what I envisage is you guys, and only you guys, research libraries, uh, would be able to do the, uh, the checking. When I say you, I mean your servers. No one will spend one second doing this. It's all automated. Okay, so uh, what about storage, blah, 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 lots of data? Uh, no. Um, look, uh, oh, can I mention SciHub in polite society? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, okay, uh, take the... Uh, uh, the entire activity of Skyhub uh, in 2011, it's a, a, a four gig, uh, a four gig file. Okay, uh, I, I can store this in on my on my uh, smartphone. Right. So you guys are worried about storage. Hey, no, no problem. Okay. Uh, okay. This is all technical. I don't care. Uh, right. So why? If this was all that, that BitViews was concerned with, I might be interested, I wouldn't be excited, and I wouldn't be here. Okay. What I think the true value of BitViews is, it provides an indirect way of making individual researchers want to use open access because it is in their own interest. Not because they are told to do it, not because they are forced to do it, not because they would be punished if, you, if they don't do it, okay? Uh, right, and essentially this is my, uh, my uh, last uh, point. Uh, are, there, are there problems? Uh, are there technical difficulties? Uh, yes, there are, but they are all solvable, and quickly and cheaply, okay? Um, I'm sure you could set up a computer.
committee that would produce a report that would tell everybody how to do it. Okay, um, economic uh, obstacles. One might say this very same problem that beset Pyrus are going to beset Bitviews. Guess what? The big publishers are not going to like it. Well, they will try to sabotage it. They will say, as they did for Pyrus, oh, I'm not going to give you my data. Well, I can get your data anyway. Uh, not only that, try and tell your authors uh, that you are trying to limit the visibility of their work when they know that they are going to be rewarded also in terms of views and downloads and not just citations. Uh, right, blah, 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 blah. Okay, blah, 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 blah. All right, so, um, of course, uh, setting up bit views will cost a small amount of money. Um, the Mellow Foundation has given nearly half a million dollars to a tiny open access, uh, extremely niche journal in English. I need half of that amount of money to do this. <coughs> okay. Um, but everybody thinks that it's everybody else's job to fund it. So there's going to be a problem. Um, now, I'm sure you can do you, your advocacy work fantastically well and, and, uh, uh, and, and authors will uh, be very receptive. For example, in the UK, 25% of the REF money is going to be allocated according to non-citation impact. Every single university in the UK has got someone called a impact director and they are scratching their heads, they have no idea what that means, right? This would give them something to work on, okay? Uh, but I think that there is a bigger problem with uh, the success of this project, and that is to do with your attitude. Your attitude is this, open access is obviously a good thing. How can you not like it? And 85% of the researchers agree with you, okay? Do they practice what they preach? Answer is no. Why? Because it's not in their personal interest to do so, okay? So, it needs a change of attitude. Instead of saying, wouldn't it be nice if we had open access, you have to make self-interested academics want open access. And that is it. Thank you very much.